Welcome to Music Theory Grade 2, Part 3, in which we're going to be discussing intervals, triads, and musical terms and signs. Okay, first, intervals. Now, in Grade 1, we only had to know two intervals, remember? We had to know thirds and fifths. For Grade 2, we're going to need to know all the intervals in both major and minor keys. Okay, starting in a major key, look, we're in C major here. You can see that a C next to a D would be known as a major second. Okay, C with an E above, major third. A C with an F would be called a perfect fourth. A C with a G would be called a perfect fifth. C with an A would be called a major sixth. And a C with a B, a major seventh. And then this octave here, which would be a C to a C, would also be perfect, a perfect octave. Okay, so intervals in a major key can be major or perfect intervals. So again, it, even if you had a, a D major scale here, it would be the same. So with the first and second tone degree together, it's called a major second. First and third, major third. First and fourth, perfect fourth, first and fifth, perfect fifth, first and sixth, major sixth, major seventh, and perfect octave. Okay, so again, you can really just count. C to D is obviously a second. C, D, E, that's a third. C, D, E, F, that's a fourth. Okay, and then remember to look at the key signatures or accidentals. So obviously C to F, there is an F natural in C major, so that would be a perfect fourth, C, D, E, F. Maybe if, if it was an F sharp, that would be a different story because there is no F sharp in C major and therefore it wouldn't be a perfect fourth. Um, but for example, if you had D, F sharp, remembering that there is an F sharp in D major scale, D, E, F sharp, that would be your major third because D does have an F sharp in the scale. But working with C major, where there are no sharps or flats, you'd get major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, and perfect octave. Okay, now we enter a minor key, and this is C minor, which remember has three flats. And obviously, your raised seventh, making it a D natural. Okay, so C to D would be a major second. C to E flat, remember that there's a flat in the key signature, so this is an E flat. C to E flat would be a minor third. Okay, look, C to E natural, major third. C to E flat, minor third. C to F, perfect fourth. The same as in the major, because it's C to F natural, that's a perfect fourth. Same with C to G, perfect fifth. C to A flat, because remember there is a flat in the key signature, would be a minor sixth. In the major key, remember, it's C to A natural, so that would be a major sixth. C to A flat would be a minor sixth. C to B natural, major seventh, because that's really the same as in the major key. C to B, B natural, major 7th, and C to B natural, major 7th. And then again, the perfect octave. Okay, so in a minor key, we have major, minor, and perfect intervals, whereas in the major key, we only have major and perfect intervals. But really, guys, you need to remember to consider the key signature, because if you weren't looking at this key signature here, it would look just like the C major scale. But because of this key signature, we have things like the minor third and the minor sixth. Okay, so that's really important to remember to look at the key signature. Okay, on to triads. In grade two, you need to know exactly the same triads as you learned in grade one. Okay, so remember, what is a triad? A triad is a three-note chord built with a root note and then intervals of third and a fifth above it. So it's really a chord with a root note, which actually just means the bass note, 
and then a third above it and a fifth above it. And you may be asked to write or identify one of the primary triads with or without a key signature. Okay, do you remember what the primary triads were? They were the tonic triad, subdominant triad, and dominant triad. Okay, always remember to look at the key signature first, if there is one, to identify what your tonic, subdominant, or dominant chord will be. So, for example, in, in C major, um, if there is a key signature, C major obviously has no sharps or flats, what would your tonic triad be? It would be the triad on C, okay, because remember, tonic means first note, so it would be C, E, G. And your subdominant triad would be the triad on F, so it would be F, A, C. And your dominant triad would be the triad on the fifth note, G, G, B, D. Okay, if there is no key signature, remember to add in any accidentals that should be added. So they might say, please write a subdominant triad in the key of D major without a key signature. So then you'd look, okay, D, E, F, G, G, B, D. Okay, they, they don't actually need any sharps or flats because... D major we know has an F sharp and a C sharp and in the subdominant triad GBD there would not be any F's or C's okay if you are asked to write a tonic triad the tonic or first note of the key will be your root note obviously a subdominant triad will have the subdominant which is the fourth note of the key as its root note and a dominant triad will have the dominant fifth note of the key as its root note root note. So let me just give you another example on that. Um, let's say we're in F major. Okay, so your tonic for F major would be F. So your triad will be one based on F, F, A, C. Okay, your subdominant triad, count up from F, F, G, A, B flat. Remember that there's a B flat in the key signature. So your subdominant triad in F major would be B flat, D, F. And your dominant triad, F, G, A, B, C, because it's the fifth note, would be C, E, G. Okay, so that's a case where your subdominant would need a B flat, B flat, D, F. So if there was no key signature, you'd have to remember to add that B flat. Or if they, if they ask for a key signature, then the B flat will be in the key signature. Remember to look out for raised sevenths in the minor key. Or if you're asked to write a triad in a minor key, remember to raise the seventh. Okay, so that's very important. Um, the, the minor key will always have a raised seventh. So you might see an accidental. Um, if there is a key signature, you might see an extra accidental, which often means, oh, this must be in a minor key because... That accidental is indicating the raised seventh. On to terms and signs. Okay, you'll be expected to know the terms you learned for grade one, as well as these new terms. Dynamics, we already spoke about dynamics. Dynamics mean louds or softs. Okay, you're going to need to learn forte piano, which is indicated with an F and a P, and this tells you to go loud and then immediately soft. So also strong or strong to gentle. So um, you might have one note with an F and a P below it. And this means that you start the, the attack of the note really loudly. And then quickly, quickly, you take it to soft. Tempo, remember this talks about um, speed of your piece. We need to know allegando, which means broadening or becoming a little slower. Langsam, which means slowly. Larghetto, somewhat slow, but not as slow as Largo. Largo means broadly and slowly. Lento, I have forgotten to write it in here, but that also means slowly. Mosso, which means movement, as in pace. Rash means fast. Schnell also means fast. Tempo primo means resume the original speed. Okay, on to character markings. These obviously tell you with what character or emotion or style to play the piece. Alla marcia means in the style of a march. 
delicato means delicately. Espressivo, often shortened to ESPR, means expressively. Frolic means lively or joyfully. Gracioso means gracefully. Leggero means light and nimbly. Lustig, cheerfully or merrily. Ruhig, peacefully. Versando, playfully. Tempo diminueto means in the tempo of a minuet. Onto articulation. Mezzo staccato means moderately staccato. Remembering that staccato means that you detach the notes. You play them really short and detached. So moderately staccato means a moderately short and detached note. Portato means, again, moderately detached but not short. Tenuto is really the opposite of a staccato and you hold the notes to their full length. But without actually lengthening the note, you just make sure that they get their full value. Words which combine with terms, con means with. So we'll often have maybe something like con brio, with, which means with, with vigor. So con means with. Ma non troppo, but not too much. So you might have something that says uh, maestoso ma non troppo, which, which means um, maestoso but not too much. Meno um, means less. And mezzo means moderately. See, I see I've written mes here, but it means less. Molto means very and senza means without. Other terms and signs. De capo means from the beginning. Al segno means to the sign. De capo al fine means repeat from the beginning and end at the word fine. An opus, often shortened to opi, is a creative work or musical composition. So something that says opus one would be the composer's first composition.